Morning. If you're in Richland County right now, we love to get your reports when it's safe to do so. We love to get your pictures. Let's go ahead and review a couple of things. First and foremost, in a tornado watch. And uh, if you've been watching with us, I apologize for some repetition here, but some folks are just joining us as these noisy thunderstorms enter their area. We do have uh, a couple of tips for you. A tornado watch means that we just have all of the ingredients in place for tightly rotating storms. So if you are in a sturdy structure and you're watching from home or you've heard thunder and lightning heading your way and you've heard you're under a tornado warning, once a warning is issued, that means it's happening. Either it's been observed or we're seeing a tight spin on the radar and it's a Doppler indicated tornado in your house. It should be a sturdy house that's anchored to the foundation. What that means is it's not a mobile home, it's not an RV, it's not a camper, but a, a, a sturdy structure at home. Get to the lowest floor possible. Hopefully you have a basement, and if you don't, that's okay. But get to the lowest floor possible, and then get to an interior room. Hutch likes to say walls, walls, walls. Put as many uh, walls between you and the flying debris as possible. So if a tornado were to come or if gusty straight line winds were to come to your community, the debris picked up, be it a breaking tree branch or a flying anything, okay, has to go through multiple walls before it gets to you. That gives you a much better chance of surviving the storm. Get to the basement if you can, and then you're down here below the level of all the flying junk in the atmosphere. If you're in a mobile home, if you're in an RV or a camper, if you're at one of our state parks, a line of storms is making its way into places like, well, Lakes Country for Otter Tail County, Grant County. Uh, if you're down at the Lake Traverse area, it's very stormy. You'll want to eyeball and find where you can go and find sturdy structure. Get to that place and again, follow the rules. Get low and put as many walls between you and the storm as possible. Apartments, office buildings, similarly, lowest floor is always best. If you're in your car, if you're in your car and you encounter a tornado warning and your Valley News Live weather app alarms you that you have a tornado warning, then you want to, as a matter of fact, get out of the car and into a more sturdy structure. If you look out the window of your car, such as Eric Whitehill's video right now, if you want to put that up, they're driving across country. Essentially, if you see a tornado outside the window and you do not have time, you want to travel at right angles to the tornado. If you can't tell if the tornado is going left or to the right of your car, let's say one's over here and you can't tell if it's moving left or right. Well, if you see that, then what you need to do is probably coming right towards you. So you need to try to turn left or right or get down low. Usually you want to exit the car and get into a low lying ditch. Some advice that's rather newer says drive your car into the ditch. I wouldn't advise that now with our flooding situation in our area. Many of our ditches are feet deep in water, so you got to be very careful out there driving around. Yeah, we got a, a new uh, severe thunderstorm warning issued from the Bismarck Weather Service office. This is for Kidder, Stutzman and Wells County tracking a severe thunderstorm there with 60 mile per hour winds possible and one and a half inch diameter hail possible with that one as well. That's the one that's moving uh, due north, even further north than that, Hutch. If you look uh, just in the far Stutzman County, um, there it is to the, the far left there. Oh yeah, that one. Just okay. in the very edge of Stutzman County there. Okay, yep. So that guy just outside of our, our uh, well, just on the edge of our viewing area, Medina, uh, Cleveland, and then moving north, and there's Kidder County right there. And that guy's piped up. Now let's take a look at the hail size estimates on that one real quick. Uh, this guy, uh, moving north at a fairly good clip. Again, the hail marker is just on the interstate, I-94. They're right at the uh, border crossing with, uh, with Kidder and Stutzman County. Could be upwards of one inch diameter hail as Nathan was going one over there. One and a half inch diameter. One and a half inch the, uh, diameter hail. Warning is calling for, yes. Okay, very good. And then we've got <clears throat> thunderstorms in Southern Barnes County and in Jamestown and in Lemoore. Now, um, I know a lot of you are thinking at what impact is this going to have on our rivers and our streams and there is going to be an impact. Many of them are already bankful and over bankful as we have moderate and major flooding going on across portions of the valley, particularly north of Grand Forks and along the Cheyenne River Valley here. So as we take a look that Cheyenne River Valley winding through Valley City straight down into Lisbon and then back up towards the Fargo Moorhead area is picking up some substantial rain right now as well. So right now we have severe thunderstorm warnings for Lamore. We have a severe thunderstorm warning for the Marion area for this cluster of storms. This is moving north. Uh, you can expect the wind speeds to possibly be as strong as 70 miles per hour. 
So we're starting to see now that these storms are making their way into North Dakota that uh, that they're accelerating. So the speeds have gone from 45 miles per hour for these storms to upwards of 65 miles per hour. Let's get in on this storm and look at the rotation again. Now, uh, as we have a tornado warning and a tornado warning storm here for places like Winemere, Lidgerwood, and here's the leading edge of the storm. So I'm going to go ahead and pull it up just a little bit here so you can see the the area of concern right on. The uh, I-29 corridor, New Effington, we had the report of a tornado on the ground southeast of town there uh, moments ago. That leading edge is now right here. It's right near Hankinson, as a matter of fact. Uh, and as we look at that Lidgerwood area, we got the greens and the reds next to each other. So there's still some tight rotation in this storm. It appears to be located right near the South Dakota border there. Um, we have our storm team uh, Storm chaser Eric Whitehill working their way uh, back and following the storms from the uh, backside. And we have our Hankinson camera, but the last we looked there, it was inundated by a lot of rainfall. Um, where you see the blue colors, by the way, that's some very, very strong winds. We'll get more information on that for you here in a second. But we have some wind gusts with this storm system that have exceeded 100 miles per hour tonight. And that's straight line winds. That's not uh, the tornadic variety. We do have Severe thunderstorm warning we, uh, for the Fergus Falls area, so I'll try to get the details on that. We also got a viewer photo from Valley City. It's okay. not a warning, but there's a one inch diameter hailstone, that, or a quarter sized hail, okay. a hailstone that came in from Valley City. No warning there, but it's one of those cells that's popping up. Okay, very good. So uh, our team in back, our team in back, if you have the, uh, uh, the ability to pull up our burst photos. Uh, it's uh, on Facebook, it was via Facebook. Okay, so we got a Facebook message and that picture photo shared on Facebook said that in Barnes County here, as we take a look over on that storm, one inch diameter hail in Valley City uh, from the storm that's up here. So let me uh, turn this back to uh, regular reflectivities and the reds that you see here. So as this storm made its way up into Valley City, one inch diameter hail there. There's no warning at this particular time for that storm, but we did get a picture of some quarter sized hail there. That stretches back to Jamestown. Just west of Jamestown is where we have, where we have the warning on the storm on the county here. Uh, that particular storm, by the way, the spin in it, if we take a look at that, this would be coming from the uh, Bismarck radar site here. Uh, there is some spin in this storm. As a matter of fact, it's fairly weak, but we'll keep our eyes on that as well. Right now, the main threat from that is going to be gusty straight line winds upwards of about 60 miles per hour. And here's the information, one and one half inch diameter hail from this storm making its way northward. And that storm is going to be heading in that general direction of you in Wells County and the Bowdoin area as we go through the upcoming uh, half hour or 45 minutes or so. So all the way from Southern Otter Tail County and Grant County right now, here's Grant County, uh, straight into the southern reaches of Richland County. These storms are racing northward now at 60 miles per hour. They're pushing toward the FM area. You can see the, just take a look at the size of the thunderstorm warnings that are coming out, which makes it a little bit difficult to pinpoint neighborhoods that are gonna be impacted by this. I think we're gonna have many areas impacted when we see warnings that are this huge in size. So much of central Minnesota, including now out towards St. Cloud on I-94, seeing this line of thunderstorms make its way through. This line moving through Wilmer, as you see it's straight up and down moving north, but where it curves here, uh, that's kind of like a, it, what we call the apex of a bow, and that could be an area where we see the higher likelihood of a tornado, and indeed we have a tornado warning for areas just north of Wilmer right now, uh, probably not far from that Eagle Lake area as we look up towards Alexandria and the I-94 corridor. Okay, you got the photo you said? Okay, um, yeah, why don't you put that up uh, uh, full screen? This is the one from Valley City, is that correct? Okay, so here we have a one inch diameter hail in Valley City uh, from the storm that's made its way through. No warning for that particular storm. Do you have a name on this one too, who, is, who shared it with us? Yes, uh, Deidre. Deidre. From Key. Deidre, thank you so much for sharing this uh, photo. And it's viewers like you and reports like this that help us know what's hitting the ground. We can have all the tools in the world, but a radar can only show us what's going on up at cloud level. It shoots up at an angle into the cloud. 
The farther we get away from the radar site, the higher and higher in the cloud it is. So it might be showing huge hot hail up there, but what hits the ground is what's obviously important. Thank you, Deidre, for sharing your photos. You can upload yours at valleynewslive.com. We'll continue to share those. We're also updating our Valley News Live weather app. So if you happen to, <laughs> I see that new tornado warning. Yeah, yeah. And okay. So to talk about the app, I did just put a video up on the app for those folks who uh, are thinking about getting it. But also this new tornado warning came in toward a uh, potential of radar indicated over Elbow Lake. Okay. Moving north at 40. All right, so if you're in that Elbow Lake area, Dalton area, we have had some terrible weather in Ottertail County. Uh, believe it or not, in, in, in Minnesota, western Minnesota, if you want to ask Hutch what the two most tornado prone areas are in the entire huge state of Minnesota, they're right here in our western Minnesota counties of Ottertail and Polk. S have seen more tornadoes than any other counties. They're big ones but it goes to show you that we get some pretty wild weather around these parts. These storms are moving into Dalton right now, the I-20, excuse me, I-94 corridor. They're in the southern and western reaches of Ottertail County. I'm gonna stop this from looping. Uh, if you're in Fergus Falls, you do have time to uh, seek shelter in an interior room, staying away from windows. And also wanna point out that this leading edge of storms is where the action has been all night with gusty straight line winds. In some spots in South Dakota, over 100 miles per hour as the storms just got started. Now, the farther north they go, we're probably going to see that magnitude of wind speeds drop down a little bit. But we're also still seeing very strong indications of rotation. Here's Elbow Lake in central Grant County. Here's Fergus Falls. The tornado warning is right here. Here's Battle Lake, okay? Um, here is an area that is crossing the I-94 corridor right now, new tornado warning. Let's go ahead and look at the velocity on that. Nathan, do you have a speed for that one, by the way? For the one over Elbow Lake? Yeah. North at 40. North at 40, okay, so let's go ahead and plot this. So our viewers in Fergus Falls, here's that leading edge moving north at 40. Well, I can barely fit 40 on the screen there. Okay, so if you're in Dalton, now, um, if I'm not mistaken, it was uh, two summers ago, uh, we had someone lose their life in and around Dalton from a tornadic weather. It can and does happen in this area. If you're in Dalton, 728 is, is the time that the storm will be there. Heed the warning, seek shelter, interior room, lowest level. Put as many walls between you and the storm as you can. Uh, Fergus Falls, this storm is wor working its way towards you as well by 730. Uh, again, uh, kids, I want to talk to you for a second. If you're home alone and this is kind of moving towards Fergus Falls area, here's a good thing to keep in mind. You're okay, got some time right now. Uh, it's time to think about you. So you want to get downstairs into the, the basement of your home if you have one. Now, if your home doesn't have a basement, that's okay. You don't want to be by an outside wall. So if this wall is an outside wall and behind it is the outside, then things flying through the air can come through that wall and you want to get away from that wall. Okay, so you want to put as many walls between you and the storm. If your home has a hallway, my home has a hallway, and you can walk into that hallway, and then things from the outside have to go through the outside wall, maybe a window, and then they have to go through the hallway wall before they get to you, and that adds more protection for you. So maybe a hallway. Um, my hallway has some closets in it. That's maybe another wall that you put between you and the storm. Okay? Uh, and in, once you find that interior room on the lowest floor, you get down low. You protect your head and you wait for the wind and the storm to pass and hutch here on the TV. You can leave me on. I'll let you know when the threat passes. So Elbow Lake right now you're in the warning, but the rotating part of the storm and the main leading edge of the storm is passing out of that area moving northward. Now this is a Doppler indicated tornado that will be moving up towards Lida and Vergas. So if you're in lakes country in Ottertail County here, um, you're going to want to be uh, taking your precautions as well. And one of the hard parts in Ottertail County and Lakes Country is we get into those trees and you can't see what's coming. So yeah, gotta trust the radar here and just take the time and get yourself to a safe location and, uh, and seek shelter in that interior room. So again, kids, now let's say you're not living in a home that has a basement. Uh, let's say you live in a mobile home. You wanna call, if you're in Fergus Falls, maybe there's someone who has a more sturdy structure. You don't wanna get and drive around town to get somewhere, but if you have somewhere close where there's a sturdy structure, that's great. If you're caught outside by any stretch of the imagination, get to the lowest uh, place that you can and, and get low, below the level of the flying debris if there is any, and uh, that will give you the best chance to, uh, to uh, weather the storm per se. Again, uh, one of our big communities in Fergus Falls is under a tornado warning, 7.30, that storm should be there in four minutes. 
if you are in Fergus Falls, seek shelter, and then we would appreciate your reports of what you've heard or, or seen from the storm. Another thing that gets a little bit difficult for us with storms that are located here in Fergus Falls, or even a little farther to the east in uh, Douglas County and the uh, Parker's Prairie area and Alexandria is that we're a long, long ways from the radar site. So the data that we're seeing right here on your screen is coming from very high in the cloud. So we're not looking at that rotation in the base of the cloud. We're seeing the rotation, but it's in the upper part of the cloud. So it gets a little bit harder to pick out the storms that might be producing tornadoes. And, and that's important for you to know. Just because there is uh, a tornado warning, it's prudent to issue a tornado warning for a, a tightly rotating storm that's exhibiting certain uh, characteristics to meteorologists. Uh, but sometimes there, a warning is issued, and we're not certain that that's making its way to the ground, but it could go to the ground. We did get a confirmation of a tornado from this line of storms. It's moving into Wapton Breckenridge right now. It's made its way through the Lidgerwood area, the leading edge, and there is an active tornado warning there. The good news that I'm seeing is we're not hearing a lot of reports of, uh, of tornadoes on the ground tonight, so I, I will we'll take that uh, for what it's worth for now. And we're going to take a look at the velocities along the leading edge of this storm here. Now there's Breckenridge. Uh, the greens are motioned toward the radar. I'm just going to make sure I push the right button here. Storm relative. Yeah. Okay. So the, the velocities on this guy are showing um, mainly motion towards the radar here. And uh, that would be, in, that would be the, it looks like it's locked into the radar in Mayville. Let me see if I can pull up the Aberdeen one. There we go. Switch just like that. Okay. So here's Lidgerwood, here's Breckenridge, and there's the reds motion away from Aberdeen's radar, motion towards a little space in between. Um, we do have some areas where there's some tighter spin. Uh, I'm not seeing any super strong signatures right here, but the tornado warning continues, and there certainly is shear or spin along the boundary of this leading edge of storms as it's making its way into places like Breckenridge, as it's making its way into places like Mantador, and there is a look at Windmere as well. Uh, these areas on I-29 here are seeing this leading edge with the spin right here. Pretty strong winds toward the radar here where you have the bright greens and then kind of weak winds going away from the radar on the backside. Lidgerwood, there's some, some signs of a couplet or, or spin there, so that's why the tornado warnings that are being issued are so big. Yeah. I mean, we got a viewer video viewer. that I just uh, uploaded in the system from Guelph. Oh, okay. Thank you very much. Let's go ahead and see if I can pop this up here. Okay. So Carrie shares this from uh, Guelph, North Dakota. And uh, you can see the sideways rain. You can see the lightning uh, going off there. And again, uh, our rivers here are swollen. We have a lot of soaked ground, so this is all going to be running off. And we'll take a look at the impacts of the flooding. That's certainly going to be one tonight. And areas last night, like, say, Lakes Country in Becker County, all the way down towards Breckenridge, we had uh, estimates of three to four inches of rain last night that caused flash flooding in, in the uh, Detroit Lakes area. So, again, thanks so much uh, for sharing your report. Uh, there from Guelph, and we appreciate that very much, Carrie. So thank you for sharing that. All right, let's take a look at our active tornado warnings again, and let's double check what's going on up north and take a big picture. We have that warning that continues, it looks like, continues for Stutzman County, now moving into Wells and northern parts of Kidder County. This is a severe thunderstorm warning here. This is the little cell that's prompted it, and it's moving north, northwest, just a little bit leaning back towards the west there as it tracks northward. Um, thunderstorms in the Devil's Lake Basin, this leans back into northwestern uh, um, Wells County for Harvey, all the way back towards the burn there on Highway 83 between Bismarck and Minot. There's a lot of heavy rain making its way in there. Most of this is the non-severe variety, and our main risk area continues to be uh, our home area right here. So as we take a look at the big picture right now, there's some good news to report. There is a thunderstorm warning now for this large area. It looks like the tornado warning has, has expired or been canceled for Richland County. The only tornado warning now left on the big screen, as I pause it just to make sure, because sometimes it, it does flicker a little bit, is in Fergus Falls and Dalton. So this little area right here, and you can see the leading edge of that storm is working its way to the edge of that box. 
So this leading line of thunderstorms is prompting a severe thunderstorm. What you can expect from this line is in isolated locations, we could get gusts um, up to around 70 miles per hour. We could get little pockets that get one inch diameter hail from these storms as well. And then of course, uh, there is a possibility of brief spin ups along the windy leading edge of the storm as we've been covering tonight. Now, as we go along the I-94 corridor through central and southern parts of Otter Tail County, right over Dalton is this uh, rotating thunderstorm that has prompted a tornado warning. And the tornado warning there is in effect until 8 o'clock tonight. Grant and Otter Tail County, although the risk is now all shifted up into Otter Tail County the way it looks. And it looks like one inch hail and the possibility for a tornado along this leading edge here. Alexandria and Douglas County. That storm is now pushing up into southeastern um, Otter Tail County. So if you're there and into the Wadena County area right here, uh, the strong storms are going to be surging their way northward into your area. It looks like we have a, just over Oaks a little bit of a, a severe thunderstorm warning continuing for your area as well. Let me get the details on that. It, <clears throat> okay. So the big thunderstorm warning for the entire line includes Gwinter and Lisbon. Hi, everybody in Lisbon. Got a chance to get out there and talk to you about nothing other than severe weather safety today. It was fun talking to you. Right now, uh, there's no tornado warning. We talked about what to do there. This is a severe thunderstorm warning, but we have gusty straight line winds. We talked about that. And tonight's winds have exceeded 70 miles per hour. And in some spots in South Dakota earlier, we have had reports of 80 mile per hour gusts. So in Lisbon, be prepared for locally heavy rain, a lot of lightning, gusty winds that could be on the order of 60 to 70 miles per hour. Those winds, by the way, will likely be punching out of the south and straight to the north as this line is racing northward. You can see that Oaks area is almost clear of the very heavy rain could still be quite windy there. As we look in towards Lamore County, we're seeing the eastern reaches of Lamore County and southern Stutzman County getting most of the activity. So this warned box here, most of the strong thunderstorm activity is now pushed to the north of that. All right, I want to check on our tornado warned storm here. We still have now Battle Lake is where it looks like the, uh, the uh, brunt of this storm is heading. Again, I'll remind you, this is so far away from the radar, sometimes we don't see very good velocity data. I'm going to move my fancy computer here for just a moment. But I will show you that even at this distance from the radar site in uh, Mayville, North Dakota, uh, all the way into Battle Lake area, and here's the big lake, right, uh, Otter Tail. So we look there, we've got this thing, and there is still some pretty tight uh, areas of shear right near Battle Lake right now. And it's off to the west, or maybe a couple along this gust front we call it or this line of storms. So we do have uh, that going on. Why don't we uh, can you put Eric Whitehill's uh, video up and uh, he's going through a flooded roadway right there. It uh, looks like um, I'm not sure where uh, Eric is. Is Eric available and still able to communicate with us and he can tell us where he's seeing that flooded roadway. OK, so the report is he's outside of Ross Holt right now and he's not able to talk to us, but they just went through a, a narrowing of this highway. Uh, looks like he's going uh, east. What was that? OK, very good. OK, so that that is uh, in that Ross Holt area and the water on the road was narrowing it down to one lane there uh, with some more rain in the region tonight. Okay. Fergus Falls, we just overheard. That, that uh, they spot a wall cloud in Fergus Falls and the sirens have been activated there in Fergus Falls as well. OK, thank you very much. So our news team is getting reports in Fergus Falls that you're hearing the sirens going off um, and the storm is making its way right through Fergus Falls right now. We do have some rotation and there is a tornado warning if you're in Fergus Falls and even outside of the tornado warned area. Here is the tornado warned area. Fergus Falls is included and back towards Hutch over here. We're seeing some signs of shear in the storm there as well. Even if you're close to it, uh, the sirens are going off. It's time to stay in your shelter, be in your shelter, get to that interior room of a sturdy structure and stay away from windows. It, again, this is a long ways from the radar site, so sometimes we don't get the clearest of indications of, of, uh, of a strong rotating couplet out here. But uh, there is still indications of a rotating couplet near Fergus Falls where the sirens are going off and it's right over the top of you now and a wall cloud has been sighted in town. What's a wall cloud? It's a lowering of the thunderstorm base. It kind of looks like a bowl sometimes. Um, not necessarily funnel shaped. It's just this lowering of the cloud base. 
And if that's rotating, which we're seeing there is some rotation at cloud level here, that, that indeed you could have a situation where a tornado could come out of that cloud at any time. Battle Lake area is also seeing some pretty tight rotation here with this particular storm that's making its way. And actually, it looks like it's making its way right into the uh, Otter Tail Lake area right now too, uh, very close to it. Now, if you're in Otter Tail, in Otter Tail Lake, this leading edge right here, that's gonna be the gusty stuff, right? So you're gonna go from an east wind to all of a sudden that wind's gonna slam you out of the south. So if you are on the northern shore of the big lake here, there's gonna be some big waves hitting you and a big wind that comes across that water. Um, so again, be prepared for big winds with this storm. Those wind gusts as you follow this across here, uh, expected to be on the order of around 70 miles per hour potentially as they work their way northward. There is no warning for Otter Tail or Otter Tail Lake right now, but that storm that's heading into your area does certainly have a history of that. And right here, right here on the south and west edge of Otter Tail Lake, we're seeing the greens and the reds next to each other and there is some rotation along the leading edge of that storm still. Um, even this far away from the radar, it's showing up as some rotation. We have some real tight rotation here, just off to the east of Parker's Prairie here, south of Wadena in Todd County, okay? And a tornado warning in Todd County for this little couplet you see here. So here's a, a couplet not far from Parker's Prairie. Here's a couplet in central Todd County as well, uh, and that's in Minnesota. They, they just canceled that tornado warning for Grant and Ottertail County, that small one from Furious Falls. They okay. just canceled that one. Okay, good to know. The National Weather Service has canceled the tornado warning for Fergus Falls. So we'll take a look at the big picture. But uh, Morton got a report of 69 mile per hour wind gust there. Uh, thanks to our friends at Endon reported that gust in Morton. Morton, that would be down here. Richland that, County, yes. Yeah, Richland County. And you guys, was that 60? 69. 69 mile per hour wind gusts reported in Morton as the storms blew their way through. These storms are coming in towards the FM area. Why don't we pop up our uh, sky cam for Fargo? I do want to point out we have no active tornado warnings right now in effect for our viewing area. No active tornado warnings. We have active thunderstorm warnings west, uh, west of Jamestown. We have active thunderstorm warning here in Dickey County, just near the Ellendale area. Excuse me, that's Lamore County, north of Ellendale. And then we do have some uh, strong thunderstorms just off to the east of Fergus Falls. And moving into Otter Tail Lake is a line of strong and rotating thunderstorms as well. We're going to keep our eyes on this. I do want to say that the storms right now are moving through Valley City. And as the crow flies, as far as the FM area is concerned, they're 28 miles away. These storms are moving about 60 miles per hour. They're about 30 minutes away, so as we approach the 8 o'clock hour, uh, we may see these storms. I have a product here I like to use from time to time to look at the wind speeds from Mayville now. We can get a good look into these storms. They're not quite across the line that I like to see yet, but they're getting there. Okay, so this line here. Um, the greens that we're seeing here are winds that are in excess of 57 miles per hour to 60 miles per hour. So this line of storms is indeed producing 60 plus mile per hour uh, velocities at cloud level. That's not necessarily on the ground right now, but the closer this uh, gets to Mayville and the Fargo area, the lower and lower we're gonna get then the more accurate readings of gusty winds. So let's get prepared in Fargo and let's get prepared in places like Oxbow and southern parts of of, uh, of Cass County and Clay County now to see these windy storms make their way up. We do have severe thunderstorm warnings for southern parts, uh, Sargent and Richland County. We've got that part there uh, over there in the Lamore County area, and that extends now back into Fergus Falls. So it looks like they replace that. Oh, we got a tornado warning for the, the lake area was we were just talking about. We're on w until our threat is gone. Now, if you're on the big lake, this is the big lake we were talking about. There's a tornado warning now issued for Otter Tail Lake. Uh, that storm that was rotating there, let's get that spinning uh, velocities right back up here, is right here on the west edge of the lake. Um, and that is moving northward and it's moving at, let me see if I can get the speed on the storm. It's been a while since I've looked at that. Appreciate you bearing with me. I know there's some rep repetition to what we're talking about, but if you're in Battle Lake, there is a tornado warning uh, for a storm that's making its way into your area. So let me go back one hour. Wow, they move fast. Okay, so they were off the screen at the bottom of the screen an hour ago. 
and they're in Battle Lake now. So I'm going to show you how fast that line is moving. That's incredible. 63 miles an hour. So from Hutch's kneecap to here is how far that storm has moved. So this moving at 63 miles per hour, it's going to be over the lake in no time. So let's get you all that information you need here now to prepare. If you're on the north side of the lake too, we were just talking about those winds are going to push from south to north across the lake. So if you have a boat or a boat cover or something like that over there, it's going to be some uh, very powerful winds that could be in excess of 70 miles per hour. Plus we've got rotation making its way over the lake right now. So here's the community of Otter Tail, the town of Otter Tail on the west side there. That's where you got that fancy pizza restaurant on that side. And then there's a lot of cabins, of course, on the lake itself. Moving at 70 miles per hour, 63 miles per hour. Let's get you an uh, estimate of uh, ETA for your area. Boy, this is, this is moving fast. See, I have to zoom way out just to get 63 miles on here, don't I? Okay, so if you're in Otter Tail, the community, the city, Otter Tail, it's going to be there, 744. Purim, Purim, if you're in Purim right now, uh, 757, you'll want to be ready for that. Now, the edge of the tornado warning box exits there, but the storm is moving this quick that it'll be up in Becker County, and that's along that uh, Highway 34 corridor there by uh, height of Land Lake. It'll be there about 815 if it continues on this path. Uh, it will basically blast its way through parts of uh, central and eastern Becker County as well. So primarily the main lake, the entire Otter Tail Lake area, Otter Tail City, Purim, are the areas of immediate concern with this tornado warning. Now, this is a Doppler indicated tornado, so keep that in mind. Uh, that means we're picking up some rotation, and we wanna let you know this is a long ways from the radar site, so it gets a little cluttered to look at. Uh, greens means the wind is blowing towards the Mayville radar, and reds means it's blowing away. So we still do have that spin, and it's making its way over the lake. Let me see if we can see where the lake is. Huh? There it is, it's over the lake right now. So we'll back it up a couple steps, you can see that the leading edge and the spin has worked its way over the lake. So if you're on Otter Tail Lake, if you're in the cabin, you need to get away from those windows, right? And you need to get to that interior room, stay away from the uh, uh, exterior walls and get to an interior wall. If you've got a basement, that's the best place. I'm seeing a little couplet out here on this side too um, of, of the uh, warning box right over here. Uh, so that's out there by uh, County Highway 74 on the, on the west side uh, of, of the warned area. Um, and it'll be working its way up to the uh, Highway 10 corridor here. So from Perm to New York Mills and that stretch of road and also up towards Frazee uh, in that area. So you got uh, Rush Lake, you've got uh, your lakes area south of Frazee in this area that will all be Star Lake. All of these will be in the path of this very gusty leading edge of storms. Now, as we take it back just a little further, I want to point this out. This is a long, long ways from the radar, but just south this is Wadena County, and this is moving north into Wadena County. So if you're in Wadena County, we're giving you that first alert to let you know that we've got a tight, tight rotation couplet right here, and that's moving in Todd County. And so if you know Highway uh, 10 as it moves through Wadena, and you go through places like Verndale and the turnoff out here towards Nimrod, and you get down here, and this is right by Staples. I know Staples pretty well. My folks live there. Uh, and basically there's rotation right in this area pretty strong. We got some reports, some more reports coming in. Uh, for the Morton area, they also heard 76 miles per hour after that 69 mile per hour gust earlier. 76 miles per hour there in Morton. But Emirato, Grand Forks County, a uh, uh, wind gust there of 60 miles per hour. That's also from our friends at Endon. Uh, Campbell, that's in Wilkin County, Minnesota, 69 miles per hour. And then Parker's Prairie in Ottertail County, 60 miles per hour. Just some of the reports we've got coming in here at this hour. Okay, so again, over 70 mile per hour winds in Morton. That was, yes, in, uh, Morton. in Richland County with those storms. And 69 mile per hour report. It seems like we're having some power hits here, aren't we? Yeah. And we also have a viewer video in there from Elbow Lake. Okay. Uh, that was uh, showing kind of the, the trees. And there's that Valley City hail uh, picture there as well. Okay, thanks so much. Um, okay, so here's Elbow Lake, Jessica. Thanks for sharing this. Grant County, central Grant County, before the storms made their way up to Dalton, where there was a tornado warning. This is a tornado warn storm. Looks like we're here, uh, uh, well, in the community of Elbow Lake, and the trees are uh, bending with the winds. And Jessica, we appreciate you taking this. We want you all to be safe when you're giving us the reports. 
Now, if you have wind damage after the storms move through with 60 to 75 mile per hour winds, here's something you can help Hutch and meteorologists out with. If it broke trees, what was the diameter of the tree branches? Was it one inch diameter branches that broke off and are in your yard all over the place? Or, or was it uh, a two foot diameter big tree that got felled by the storm? Um, Nathan, can you pull up our Skywatch camera here in town? Uh, the yeah. Okay, so it's up. You want it on up. your computer? Yeah. Well, I'll, yep. I can get it now. I just wanted to make sure it was yeah, the right it's camera. Aiming right. south. Okay, so we're looking south from our cameras here. These storms are on their way into the uh, FM area as we speak, and we got to keep our eyes on them. And we'll get you a timing on them. But let's take a look at them as uh, the sky cam is working as well. Okay, so the sky's getting dark. Now you're looking from our studios in South Fargo. We're at University. Here's the University right here. You're looking south towards places like Oxbow. Uh, the uh, now demolished Kmart lot is right here. So that gives you perspective. And you're looking into South Fargo, darkening skies, a low cloud base, and a line of strong and gusty winds heading away. That's the number one threat tonight. Uh, the good news is we haven't heard ginormous hail reports from most of these sites. That's fantastic news. But we have had one one and a half inch hail reports from these storms. And we have had uh, confirmed tornadoes uh, that have been sighted in a few spots. But really, I think the key is that we've had wind gusts in excess of 100 miles per hour in South Dakota crossing into the North Dakota border just a few miles south of where you're looking here at the storm that as it made its way through Morton, um, as that storm made its way through Morton, it, it caused the over 70 mile per hour gusts. So we can zoom all the way in, check this out. As we uh, take a look, South Fargo, there is the radio tower and we have got darkening skies. We'll have a, a perfect view, uh, folks, of these storms as they make their way in from the south. And we can see literally all the way into uh, Otter Tail County we can see all the way into um, Becker County uh, with, uh, with our camera here. So it gives us a good perspective. And on the leading edge is where that rotation is. So we're gonna see that first. Uh, and we also have the ability to see any rotating uh, or, or dropping wall clouds and keep our eyes on that as it moves in from the south. So we'll continue to scan the skies. And that's near, that's now a severe thunderstorm we're looking at now, Hutch. That severe thunderstorm warning just issued for Cass County, Clay County, Becker County uh, with 70 mile per hour winds as the primary threat there. A tornado is possible. Hail not looking too impactful from this system as it's moving up toward the I-94 corridor, but 70 mile per hour winds with this storm we're looking at right now from our Corn Auto Tower Cam south of town. It's moving, uh, get a speed for you. Uh, they don't have a speed, but that warning goes until 845 uh, for Cass and Clay counties and the surrounding communities. Okay, so severe thunderstorm warning now for uh, our area in Fargo as we take a look at this dark cloud. So the storm we're looking at there is now warned for as, as uh, Nathan uh, let us know. So we're under a severe thunderstorm warning in the FM area. We have a great view. We'll be uh, alluding back to that. You can, you can hear the thunder now uh, in the FM area. And that's so moving this, north at 55 is the speed there. North at 55. Okay, so here we go. We're in Fargo Moorhead, north at 55. Look at the hugeness. That's a term that you use after you've been on the air for a while. The, the enormity of the thunderstorm warning. Uh, we can't even tell you all the communities that are in it, but essentially it includes Fargo, it includes Holly, it includes Lake Park, it includes Detroit Lakes, it includes Purim, it includes Wadena, and it goes all the way out here towards Brainerd almost, and uh, St. Cloud, look at the size of that. And this box goes from one National Weather Service office in Grand Forks, and it, it slides all the way into uh, the St. Cloud area, which is covered by the Minneapolis National Weather Service. They basically said, let's get together and let's put a warning out for this entire line of storms because anywhere along it, we could have some da damaging winds. Um, I'm going to go ahead and time out the storms into Fargo now. And then I'm going to take a look back at Otter Tail County where we have the tornado warning. So let's go through that. In Fargo Moorhead, if you are in Kindred, I just drove through Kindred today. There's a lot of water. I think there's some logs stuck on the bridge there under the Cheyenne as it works its way through town from south to north, right? Right here, heavy rain making its way in right now and it's on your doorstep. The storm is moving north at 50 miles per hour. Tornado possible, it says. I gotta get zoomed out enough to be able to show this whole thing. 
So Fargo is, is 15 miles away. This is going to be on us very quick, folks, moving at 50 miles per hour. So that I can fit everything on the screen, give me a moment, and I appreciate you bearing with me here. All right, we're going to take the leading edge of our storm right here, moving northward at 50 miles per hour. And we'll just look at this little chunk right here. And uh, we got a report also from Fergus Falls just recently at 730 of 73 miles per hour there in Fergus Falls. Okay, 73 mile per hour report of winds in Fergus Falls as the tornado worn storms blew through or maybe shortly thereafter. Okay, line of storms right here, Horace first. So if you're in Horace, you might want to get the jalopy in the garage. 815 is the time, oh that's Holly, excuse me, Horace 759. So as we approach eight o'clock in nine minutes, this leading edge is going to be in your ballpark. Now, you're going to get a burp of air straight out of the south. That's the direction. So you want to make sure that you, if you have time now, it's not too windy, uh, batten down the hatches, get the lawn furniture in off there. You don't want your trampoline flying all the way to West Fargo from Horace. Okay, so get those things battened down. Don't be out there trying to sit on the trampoline with 70 to 90 mile per hour winds. Just get it taken care of and they're going to be blowing from south to north. That's the wind direction. Winds could gust upwards of 70 plus mile per hour because we've already gotten reports of that from our community. So Horace near 8, Fargo 810, that includes West Fargo. It also includes Moorhead. If you're in Moorhead and you happen to be uh, out and about tonight, get in. Make sure that you're seeking shelter in an interior room. Make sure that the uh, uh, car is away from trees and things like that. 70 mile per hour winds can uh, you know, topple trees and stuff. You got a little bit of time to prepare in Fargo, but not a lot, 8, 10. So we got about 15 minutes. Get yourself uh, and all your things battened down and take a look at that. Then it moves north and I'll go into Hitterdahl by 823, Eulen and Ada, that would be up here uh, on, that, on that right edge of the storm. But actually going right up the I-29 corridor, so Riley's Acres on up into the Hillsboro area on the outside of about an hour or so. A now new tornado as warning for Wadena County. Okay, hey, that storm we were just talking about in Wadena County that was in Todd County, tornado warning, okay? Um, uh, that one was right by the, uh, the folks' old farm. That's now moving up into Wadena County here on Highway 10, and it's crossing over Highway 10. We got two tornado warnings. Uh, we talked about this earlier. I'm going to back out just a little bit, but first and foremost, uh, we talked about this this shape that this leading edge of storms, and see how, it's, how curvy it is right here? When we get a curve like that, where a storm or a line of storms is bending like that on the apex or one of these curves, it's just a great place for us to see a, a spin up take place. Wadena County, uh, extreme western reaches of Otter Tail County here seeing uh, that, that storm warning for a tornado. Uh, also, we continue with the tornado warning for our neighbors there to the west. And this one is for the Purim area, as we were talking about. So the storm is moving into Purim and New York Mills now. Looks like there's a little bit of a split going on right here in the storm, right over the uh, Highway 10 between Frazee. So this one's splitting off to the right side, and this one's probably heading in a different direction. That also happens when we get a storm that's bowing like that and splits and stretches. So Also getting multiple reports of damage in Wapaton, some trees down uh, in Wapaton. Okay, um, and, and if someone can pass this on to news then, so we can check on that. Oh, we just had a power flash here. Wapaton has damage in town from gusty winds. So those storms have moved through Wapaton and are heading into Fargo-Moorhead now. Wind gusts have been measured at 76 miles per hour and they're heading to Fargo now. And uh, our news team may wanna check in on the folks in Wapaton and see, uh, see what they're, they're hearing there. Tornado also, warning does continue here. This is for Perm and for Rush Lake until 8.15, so for the next 15 minutes. And you can see it's not as organized of a line that's making its way through that county, but I do want to pull up the velocities and see if I see any uh, real trouble spots. The tornado warning does continue, and yes, I do. Um, there's two areas. Both of those storms have reds next to greens. One of them's on the outside of the box. We talked about this before, but it's kind of a broad rotation showing up here south and west of the Frazee area. So this would be in that Star Lake, Rush Lake area out, out over here south of Highway 10. If you're in Purim okay, and you're off to the east, you see the reds and the, and the greens next to each other. The radar is in Mayville. The greens are blowing right towards Mayville. The reds are blowing exactly away from Mayville. When you have those next to each other, that means we have a tight rotation right here. It's right over Highway 10 between Purim and, and moving in towards New York Mills. This whole area, this whole area right here, 
A lot of spin going on there, or shear is what we call that. Anywhere along that area, we could get it. And it's even outside of the tornado warned box. So that's important to note. Just because you're on the edge, you, you know, it doesn't mean, okay, we're, we're free and clear. That's why we're cutting in. That's why we're letting you know what's happening from minute to minute on Valley News Live. And that's what First Alert is all about. So we've got spin on the outside of this box, just off to the left, south and west of Frazee. We've got spin on the right side, but if you're in Purim, it looks like things are splitting. You've got a tornado warning there. You're not safe. There's very gusty winds around you, but it looks like on the latest scan that that tight rotation has kind of split around Purim. I'm going to take two steps back on the radar and let you look at the loop with me. Getting reports of power outages in Valley City. No warning there, but heavy rain in Valley City with that uh, storm going through Valley City. Okay, thank you. And that's the one where we got the, the one inch diameter hail picture from, from, too, from right? earlier. Yeah, that yeah. hail was earlier this okay. evening. Yeah, so, so hail and power outages now in Valley City and Barnes County. So you can see the two areas of spin a couple scans back. I'm going back in time to 730. Here the storms come. They move over Otter Tail Lake. And as they head, they, they kind of split into two distinct uh, areas of rotation. One's heading towards Frazee now. This area of wind is picking up right over, <laughs> right over the Cormorant Lake chain right here. Wind toward the radar moving pretty strong there. So very gusty straight line winds associated with these storms. If you're in New York Mills too, I'm seeing rotation. Let's get to Wadena County here real quick. Uh, moving into Wadena right now is a rotating couplet uh, with this storm that's moving north. Um, this storm here also, let's see how fast that the latest warning says. I'm pulling this information up on my computer. It's moving north at 40 miles per hour, a little slower. There's the couplet right there, okay? It doesn't look too strong, but we got to take that with a huge grain of salt because it's so far away from the radar in Mayville, it's so far away from the radar in Minneapolis that we're looking at very high off the ground into the cloud. But there is some rotation and it's moving north right into Wadena. It'll be there in minutes. If you're in Wadena, uh, we all know what happened on June 17th of 2010 in Wadena. You take these things seriously and it's time to heed those warnings once again. Get to the lowest floor of a sturdy structure. Stay down low. Uh, if you're in a mobile home or if you're in a manufactured home, you don't have a lot of time now. It's going to be on you quick. It's moving at 40 miles per hour. Get to that interior room away from windows. You know where the road curves here right before you go into Wadena. We got Bluffton up here. Now you got hit pretty hard that same day, didn't you? So uh, again, tornado warning, Wadena, Sabika, you're included. The rotating part of this thunderstorm is mainly in the southern part right now. Southern part of Wadena County, right at the Todd County line. And uh, not a confirmed tornado. It's a radar indicated tornado. Heed the warning, seek shelter. Tornado warning for our viewers in Wadena uh, and Wadena County. Tornado warning for our viewers in Otter Tail County off to uh, the west here in New York Mills. Particularly, uh, there's some rotation showing up there. We're getting a little bit more now, not far from you in Purim, to be honest with you. So it looked like it had split, but see this. So the Highway 10 corridor from Frazee all the way to New York Mills, I, I recommend that you seek shelter in the interior room. We got reports of some gusts as these things made their way through uh, Grant County and also uh, Fergus Falls in excess of 60 miles per hour. So, so very gusty straight line winds with those storms. Now let's get you back to Fargo. I'm gonna pop up the sky cam here real quick. And here we go. Let's take a scan of the skies with our camera and take a look. Um, thank you, Nathan. All right, so here's what's coming to Fargo. It's not a tornado warning, number one, for Fargo, Moorhead at this time. But these storms uh, are very strong wind producers, folks. And they're coming from an uh, area where the uh, atmosphere was so unstable that they grew to heights of nearly 60,000 feet high, if you can imagine that. Okay, 60,000 feet, what, how many miles is that? Is that like eight and a half miles up there, right? So you're way up in the sky and you get hailstones up there and they fall to the ground. That gets to be a headache real quick. Um, tier of counties north have been uh, uh, issued a large warning for. Okay, so we're scanning the skies. I'm seeing some good things. Uh, I'm, I'm not seeing any lowering cloud bases and uh, I'm not seeing a lot of dust or gust uh, associated with a, a huge outflow heading to Fargo yet, 
But if we zoom in a little closer, you're gonna see there's that where our vision stops, that's the leading edge of the, the wind and rain right there. That's what we would call the gust front. So that's when we'll know uh, that this one means some pretty, pretty serious business. There's a lot of lightning with this. We're getting power flashes here at the studios. South Fargo as this line is making its way towards us. So what's coming towards Fargo is a severe thunderstorm capable of some very gusty straight line winds and it has produced wind gusts of 76 miles per hour in southern parts of Richland County and central Richland County as it worked its way through that particular area. Let me tell you about Weather Service said something about a, a big area of thunderstorm warnings up in the northern valley. I want to load that and see if I can uh, get you any information on what we're seeing there. I don't see anything up north, do you? For uh, warnings? Yeah. No. No. Uh, we did get a report though from Ottertail County, Phelps, Minnesota. Seven inch diameter branch broken, I guess near Maine and Minnesota is where that seven inch diameter branch was broken. Okay, so, so breaking tree branches. There, oh, there's the new warning. Uh, that's, along the, uh, that's along the Highway 10 corridor. So we're talking Fargo. Uh, is that the same one? I think it is. That's so, the same one, yeah. Yeah, and this one wraps all the way around to St. Cloud where we do have this bendy thing here and when you get that backward C shape along the apex of that or the kind of the point of that bend uh, on the Boeing Echo, that's where we have that risk for or enhanced risk for tornadoes and they got a couple tornado warnings there. We got these moving straight south to north and a lot of heavy rain with them. Again, look how widespread the rain is going to be with this. The Red River essentially from Grand Forks through Oslo, Drayton, Pembina, uh, very high levels. We have quite a bit of rain heading towards those areas. The Cheyenne River has been a trouble spot. Uh, Valley City and points north, not as much lately uh, with a little bit of room possibly up at the reservoir there. But anywhere downstream from Valley City, we have a lot of water that's been moving through places like Lisbon where I went through today, Kindred as well. Uh, those rivers are pretty swollen. Continued tornado warnings, the Highway 10 corridor here of Ottertail County, we just talked about that from the uh, uh, areas in and around Purim all the way down towards New York Mills. Wadena County, tornado warning for Wadena, the city, and also Sabika just to the north and northern parts of Wadena County. Garden variety thunderstorms right now up to the north, and if we go ahead and show you a look at what our, our threats are, these storms now, are making their way closer to the Mayville radar. And I had mentioned that I'd be able to give you a little bit of a wind estimate for the north-south flow. Let's take a look at the north winds that are blowing into Fargo right now. Um, take a look at this. Uh, I filter off all the wind except things that are severe winds. And again, this is off the ground. This is not necessarily what you're gonna measure on your wind device or anemometer in town, but this is green. That means the wind is blowing from south to north straight towards the Mayville radar. There's Mayville. So that's the direction of this wind that it's measuring. Now the wind direction out of the storm might be a little bit this way, but the direction that's being measured is that way. And let's get a reading on the velocity here. So I'm gonna turn off a couple of layers so I can see a little better. And again, this is gonna be a, a wind that's happening just off the ground. That doesn't mean it's on the ground, but it certainly do, does not mean it couldn't mix down to the ground. So where we're seeing these winds here, see if I can pop up some uh, 67 mile per hour winds. Oh, my computer's in the way, That'll allow me. <laughs> there we go. So some of these green spots here could be a little bit more than that, but we have winds to the magnitude of around 70 miles per hour being measured by Doppler radar, not estimated, measured by Doppler radar, blowing directly toward the Mayville radar. It might be a little bit more, it might be a little bit less depending on the direction of the wind, but this is called a radio velocity that's on the radio right toward the radar, 67 mile per hour right toward the radar. So prepare for gusts that could be happening right now or at any time. This is just off the ground, okay? The hail and the rain, once that starts hitting the roof here at the studios, then this wind can get mixed down or brought down to the ground pretty quickly. So we'll keep our eyes on that. So gusty straight line winds to the tune of 70 miles per hour appear to be flying over Fargo right now where we see the bright greens. Again, this is what's off the ground over our heads just a little bit. If that energy gets mixed down to the ground by the raindrops or brought down to the ground, we can have some winds uh, in that ballpark again, right here in the FM area. So hopefully now in Fargo, you're in your safe spot. You're staying away from windows. Uh, very gusty straight line winds will be heading our way. And you can see that they're focused pretty well right over Fargo, Moorhead, Dilworth, and uh, Glendon uh, at this hour. So those peak winds are taking place there. Um, 
If we get too far away from the radar site here, then we're looking real high in the clouds and that, that information that I'm showing you becomes a little bit less useful as far as <clears throat> the magnitude of the, uh, of the winds that we could be measuring. So huge, oh, <clears throat> huge area of thunderstorm warning now. Looks like it does include Fergus Falls, it includes Fargo. Hey, thank you, <laughs> I'll take a drink. It's probably been 10 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> we did record uh, when you're taking a sip there, Hutch. I'll say we got a report. It's about 15 minutes old of a funnel cloud in uh, Wrightstown. That's Ottertail County. So that was from that storm earlier in Ottertail County. And that was tornado warned, and there was a funnel cloud observed with that storm there. Okay, so we're we're getting some storm reports filtered in. Um, again, I want to point out the size of the thunderstorm warning. It does include Fargo Moorhead. You're looking at this color here, this red. That's heavy rain. That's going to be moving into town now from the